Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I just want to answer a question I always seem to be getting, and that's about Clipper configurations. So let's go ahead and get started. Periodically, I work with people to help them configure their printer, and one of the most common questions is Clipper configurations. If you don't have this GitHub site bookmarked, you really need to. And this is the Clipper configuration example site. And there is some really awesome stuff here. So they have some general examples of configurations. But then if you start scrolling down, they have examples for generic big tree tech boards. They have duet boards, all various boards you could be interested in. In fact, somebody just sent me some questions about an MKS Robin, and I'm not familiar with that board. But the first thing I could send them is, hey, have you looked at these configurations here? And let's just click on one. Let's say we're interested in the Robin Nano version 3. So we're putting this on our printer. As we're working to set up Clipper, right here at the top of the file, it tells us how we need to set it up. It tells us what chip we need to compile for. It tells us what we need to select for a bootloader, and then what we need to do for communication. Additionally, I guess, if you're looking through here, it shows us what we need to do to flash the file. And so in this case, it's generating the clipper.bin, and we basically need to rename it to robin underscore nano underscore v3.bin, put it on an SD card, and then flash it. And again, this gives us the initial general configuration for that board, uh, how it's most commonly wired and put together. Now you have to review this and see, do you have it wired the way this is set up? You probably want to check the manual for the board. But again, you need to start with these example configurations. It's the easiest thing to do. Again, I just showed you how it has various boards. But if I start scrolling down, you'll notice they actually have examples for various printers. Just the other day, I was working with somebody who was working on a Ender 5 Plus, converting it to a Mercury 1, and I couldn't remember how something was set up. And so basically, we just looked at the example Ender 5 Plus configuration, and then we're basically able to look at and determine what the rotation distances were. So again, use these sample configurations. It should be your first place to start before you do anything, particularly at, before you start flashing anything with Clipper, read through these files and see what the examples say. Well, there's two other places to look as well. There's the configuration reference, which has details on all the various settings. I'd look through here. This is very well documented. It tells you what every different variable is and what it is with a great description. And then lastly, there's some example configurations in the documentation. So you want to look through these and see how that could help you. That's the place I would start before I flashed my printer, before I started any work on Clipper. Check and see if there's an example configuration. Before you start any work, make sure you have an example configuration to work for, from. If you do, that makes your life easier and you can get a work printer. It really stinks to be working on a printer, be most of the way through, you've started flashing stuff only to realize that you don't have a sample and now you need to go back online and try to find some. So, as I said, you want to go to the Clipper GitHub page. You're going to go to the configs, and under config is all these example configs, and there's a couple hundred of them. Again, this is the place I would start. These are updated fairly often. And so hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description 
you can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.